so as a disclaimer, um, on the mission, you know, two years is a pretty long time. So if I have a few crazy stories, it doesn't mean that the mission's crazy or that it's dangerous. Um, <clears throat> it's just, you know, when you condense two years <clears throat> looking at crazy stories, it might seem a little crazy. But anyway, yeah, I had some crazy experiences on my mission. Um, I'll just name off a few. Uh, all right, where to begin? Well, I got punched once on my face. It didn't hurt. I think what happened, I was in Comodoro with my companion, Elder Granko. We're both, you know, six foot two or so. He's like twice my size, football player. And we were walking quickly on the Saturday morning to do a contact with a brother who's walking with his two little daughters. And I think we might have startled him seeing two Americans wearing, you know, name tags and suits, walking quickly up to him in kind of a city that's somewhat dangerous. Um, Anyway, so he didn't say anything. I'm like, oh, hola, hermano, como esta? Like, how are you doing today? And he just looks at me really angrily and takes his arm and goes, whoop, whacks me right in the cheek. And it didn't hurt, but it got me a little dizzy. And then his little girls were saying, like, no, daddy, don't do it. Don't do it or something. And I was like, oh. And then, you know, I'm just like, oh, gracias. Like, quiero, que tengo buen día, you know. Love ya. Have thanks. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Um, anyway, we were laughing after that. I had a red mark. It didn't hurt. Uh, if it hit me in my nose, like straight on, I'm sure that would have hurt. But anyway, so that was kind of a fun experience. Um, a couple other ones. Once uh, we were trying to enter in lots of houses, uh, running house to house, trying to get in as many as we could in this one neighborhood. And we saw one where there was lots of people going in and out. We're like, oh, perfect. We're going to just be able to get in this house easy easy peasy um and we were uh we got in there and there's a lot of young adults older teenagers using cell phones talking uh there's a big room full of motorbikes um anyway we found that it was like a gang hangout place and we're like so what do you guys do and like oh well we're a gang we we kill mormons and they were just joking trying to like scare us uh it kind of worked on me <laughs> my companions they're like preaching repentance to them and and i was sitting down quietly like trying to listen to the spirit i'm like if the spirit says leave I'm going to run from here as fast as I can. Because, uh, like, we saw some cars pulling in, and I was thinking that one of the people was, like, texting, like, hey, guys, come here. You know, we're going to mess with the missionaries. Uh, come, it's going to be fun, you know. I thought maybe that was happening because I saw people starting to arrive. I'm like, oh, this could be a bad time. Um, and then the ringleader came in. He had a shaved head. He was tall, and he's like, hey, I don't want you guys here. I'm like, oh, okay, not a problem. We'll leave. <laughs> so we left. And I was a little shaken up, but... It was fun. Um, worked out okay. Uh, let's see some other crazy stories. Um, I mean dogs. The guy already talked a little bit about dogs. Dogs do crazy things. Um, one time we had uh, a few kind of like I don't know if they were seven, eight year olds, ten year olds, and they all had slingshots. And so we we're uh, going up uh, a stairwell preaching at this apartment complex, getting shot at by like these little pebbles that they're putting in slingshots. And you know, like a slingshot with a pebble could kind of hurt if it hits you. Um, I remember we were talking with this elderly lady like on the third floor and we saw these little pebbles like smash into the wall next to us. And it was kind of fun, you know, it felt a little bit like uh, uh, Samuel the Lamanite, you know, like with pebbles flying all directions, but never hitting us. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, and I, I actually just asked, like, a person we were talking with, like, hey, can we get in or whatever. Like, these kids are, like, trying to hit us with rocks. And they actually came out and, like, yelled at the kids, and they, like, left us alone. So that worked. Um, another time I was on exchanges in Aoken City and uh, with my district leader. And there are these kids. I think they wanted to, like, get a watch or a cell phone from us or something. I mean, we didn't have much on us except for scriptures, but uh, they're asking us about cell phones or watches. We're like, no, we don't have anything. Sorry, we've got pamphlets you can have. And they kind of followed us around, kind of a little suspicious. They, but they, one was like super young and one was like younger than us, but like, you know, a teenager. So we weren't too worried. But then all of a sudden, I'm, you know, doing a, we were doing a contact. And all of a sudden, I feel this sharp pain in my ankle. I'm like, oh i look down and there's a rock there you know i don't know if it's maybe two inches or you know decent sized rock that you know looked like 50 yards to our right and there's the kids like hey guys come on over here i'm like dude i'm not gonna go over there if you just like threw a rock at me that really hurt <laughs> so we left there and once we got out of their sight you know we 
quickly left that neighborhood just to avoid problems. And uh, one time I was on divisions or on exchanges uh, with in a kind of near Comodoro in that zone, uh, Kilometro maybe, Tres or something. Anyway, we were there Sunday morning, went and uh, Sunday mornings are some of the most like, you wouldn't want to go out super early on a Sunday morning because there's these things called boliches where Saturday night and Friday night people go out and they party until like 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. and drinking and doing all sorts of stuff. I don't really know exactly what they do, but um, anyway, there's a group of like eight grown men it seemed like and one of them had a gun a pistol extended and he was yelling at this guy like saying come here and chasing after this guy like walking quickly and we saw him like a block away from us just across the quad or the the, the block and uh, anyway we uh, told the other elders that were in the same apartment you know to take a different route to get to church and on our way i think we saw some guys in the police car so maybe they got arrested i don't really know but um yeah uh in one of our apartments in Comodoro, actually, there was a boliche, you know, dance party place like right next to us. So uh, some of the elders, I didn't really see much, but, you know, you could look out your window in the morning when you wake up and see people leaving and sometimes they'd go crazy or yell things, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, there was one guy that we met that was kind of like, I don't know if he was schizophrenic, but sometimes uh, he had one name, the other time he had another name and when he had the other name he was like a little crazy and it was kind of weird uh it really was weird i i can't deny it but uh, it was a kind of an interesting experience uh getting to know him he once threw like a big rock at me he didn't hit me but i'm like well, what's going on you're like my friend <laughs> um one other thing i won't really go into much details about this but uh we want to like a zone conference and Neil Ken came back a day later or two later and uh, we're talking with the other elders in our apartment and they're like you wouldn't believe what happened they show us the front page of the newspaper of Comodoro and it says man is hospitalized after meeting with the missionaries <laughs> and it has this guy in handcuffs getting taken out and we're like whoa you've got to tell us what in the world happened and um Anyway, crazy story. I won't like, it'll probably take a little too long to go all the details. I wasn't there personally, so I don't really know all the details very well. But basically, they're having a prayer, visiting a less active sister. There was her student there who's maybe 25, seemed normal. In the middle of their opening prayer to teach them, he just goes psycho, like starts whacking death, starts jumping up and down on beds and screaming and like looking really, really freaky, kind of possessed. And, uh, they had a really crazy experience with him and they're trying to help calm down by singing hymns and saying prayers, but it wasn't really helping him. And uh, state president showed up and just randomly. And it was crazy. The guy just wouldn't calm down. He was just kind of going in and out of just being like insane. Uh, and it got to the point where he tried to like strangle himself. Like he went outside and tried to get like a clothesline and he was just going crazy. And so uh, the police or the ambulance eventually showed up and they actually took him away. Um, and so that's why they got the headline. You know, the missionaries had nothing to do with it. They're just teaching a less active sister with her visitor there. And then the visitor just went bonkers. Um, anyway, there's some crazy stories. Uh, I'm sure there's probably more crazy stories. Um, I think once I heard maybe our second outer door, kind of really strong one, maybe getting hit at in the middle of the night. Um, and maybe the guy was getting like chased by someone. It looked like there was a car looking for somebody, but we were fine. And I you know all these stories, there's like for each of these stories, there's, you know, like five spiritual experiences that are really powerful. And, um, and that's kind of condensed over the course of two years. So you don't have to really worry about it. Um, yeah, we were safe. It was great. Uh, as long as you've obey the mission rules, obey, follow the spirit. I think you'll be okay. So.